Welcome to Ignani.com. Microsoft SQL Server 2012. Chapter 2 SQL Server 2012 Tools. Part E Query Editor. In SQL Server Management Studio, creating objects, manipulating the data, executing code, and other such activities can be performed either by using the graphical interface and options that Object Explorer provides, or by writing code using Transact SQL. To write code, we need a freeform text editor so that we can type anything we need, as in the case of a notepad. Fortunately, SQL Server Management Studio provides an editor, with a tabbed entry window, occupying the document window area. The editor that we are referring to, is known as a query editor. The query editor is explicitly designed for writing T-SQL statements, but it works similar to any text editor. You can open the query editor, by clicking on the new query button on the toolbar, or by selecting file, new, database engine query from the menu. The connect to database engine dialog box appears. Provide the server name, authentication info and click connect. It creates a connection handle and assigns it to the query editor. The query editor opens up. Notice, the object explorer does not display anything. The connection handle is specific to the query editor. Once the query editor is open, you can use it as a normal text editor. But as you start to enter some statements, you'll start to notice its features. Before proceeding, let me introduce you to some key elements on the toolbar. This is the available databases drop-down, from which you can select a database to execute your queries on. The execute button, used to execute the queries, and debug button, if in case you would want to debug the TSQL statements. The parse button is used validate the query to find out errors. Though it doesn't find every error that might occur, it's good in ensuring that the syntax is correct. Let me type in a simple select statement. First thing that'll come to your notice is that the query editor will automatically display various elements in different colors. For example, keywords are displayed in blue by default, and literal values are displayed in red, which makes it easier, to read and understand the statements. Another feature, that is the highlight of Query Editor, is IntelliSense, which automatically displays completion lists, that can be used to complete the keywords, or other elements while writing the SQL statements. Notice, as I type, the IntelliSense list appears, with all the objects containing the characters that I typed. All that is required, is to use the arrow keys to select the item from the list, and press tab to complete the word. As I select the schema named, person, and press dot, it displays all the objects that belong to that schema, and as I type in next set of characters, the list filters automatically making it easier for the user to select what is required. This not only makes it easier to write the code, but will also decrease the spelling mistakes that we make while writing the code. The more you use IntelliSense, more easier it becomes, and will quickly become a feature you will get used to and depend on. By default, the IntelliSense feature is turned on. However, it's possible to turn some, or all the functions of this feature, off. For IntelliSense to work correctly, you should be connected to a SQL Server database engine. Let me open a new query editor tab, but this time I will not connect to any database engine. You can now see that even when I type in the code, the IntelliSense list does not appear. Let me open a new query editor tab, but this time, 
I will use the connection handle from the object explorer. Select a node in the object explorer tree. And from the file menu select new. Query with current connection. Or press Ctrl plus N. Or you can select the new query button on the toolbar. Notice, the connect to server dialog box did not appear. Now, if you type in the code, the IntelliSense list appears as expected. Before you start to write your queries, make sure that your query editor window is connected to a correct database engine, and a correct database is selected, so that the IntelliSense can include correct objects in the completion list. You can identify the database name, and also change it, from the available databases drop down on the toolbar. As you can see, I changed the database from Adventure Works to Master, and the query editor is showing an error. Also if I type in the code, the list displays a different set of objects. The IntelliSense list, only shows the objects related to the selected database. Once I select the Adventure Works database, the IntelliSense list shows the objects as expected. To change the active database, you can type in the database name, or select it from the available databases drop down. If you want to select the column names before specifying the table name, make sure you type the table name before you entered the columns as shown here, so that IntelliSense can display the column names for the table in the completion list. If there are any errors, Query Editor will display a wavy red line below the element that is responsible for the error, so that you can easily see and fix it before executing. There isn't any column name as first names in the person table, so let me change the column name from first name to first names. The Query Editor notices this and displays the red line immediately below the text that is responsible for the error. If you hover the mouse over the red line, Query Editor displays a message indicating the reason for the error. Query Editor not only tells you where the error is, but it will also tell you what is the cause of it, so that you can easily fix it. Once you are done writing your query, click on the Execute button on the toolbar, or press F5, to execute the query. If the statement is correct, and if it returns data, then that data, is displayed in the results tab at the bottom of the query editor as you can see here. Before moving forward, I would like to walk you through the status bar that you see here, which provides us with a lot of useful information. It's divided into different parts. The first part which occupies a large area of the status bar displays the message. Here you can see that it says the query executed successfully. The next part displays the database engine name, with the version number, followed by the username which was used to establish the connection. Next, it displays the database on which the query was executed, followed by the time taken to execute the query, and the final part displaying the number of rows it returned. The message tab, which is next to the results tab displays the number of rows that are affected by the query, or the error information if the query had any error. Let me modify the query, so that it returns an error. As I execute it, the error message appears in red colored text in the messages tab. Also notice that since the query execution did not return any data, the results tab does not appear. The status bar now displays a message stating that the query execution completed, but with errors, and the number of rows returned is zero. The error message not only displaying the cause, but also the exact location with the line number. 
you can double click on the error message and it will directly take you to the place that is responsible for the error. Let me split the query into multiple lines and change it to have the error on line 2. Now, when you double click on the error that appears, notice, it did not highlight the entire query, but it just highlighted the line that was responsible for the error. Saving queries. To write a query, you would have put in some effort, and you would want to save it, for future use, so that you can open it again, and execute it, or modify it later on, or use it as a base for writing a new query. If you have used other Windows text editors, Query Editor is no different from them. To save a new query or to save a modified query, just use the save command. Select it by clicking the save icon on the toolbar, or by selecting file, save from the menu, or by pressing ctrl plus s. Which will open the save file as dialog box. Select the folder where you would want to save, give it a name, and click save. If you try the save command again, it will not display the dialog box but instead it will use the previously provided details and save the file automatically in the background. If you have already saved the file, and would want to save with a different name, use the save as command. You can do so by selecting the option save as, from the file menu, which will open the save file as dialog box. It will allow you to change the details, and save it as a new file. Whenever you do any modification to the content, an asterisk appears at the end of the file name, which indicates the file as unsaved content. If you have more than one file and would not want to save them at one shot, you can use the save all command. To use the command, click the save all button on the toolbar, or select save all from the file menu, or press ctrl plus shift plus s. This command will save all the files, if they were already saved with a name. For new files, it will show the dialog box, so that you can enter the file name and path to save it. Opening saved queries. You save the queries in a file to use them later on. To open an existing query file, click the open button on the toolbar, or select file, open file from the menu, or press ctrl plus o, which opens the open file dialog box. Select the file that you want to open, and click the open button. Connect to the database engine if required. And also make sure you select the correct database from the available databases drop down. As mentioned earlier, Query Editor is a tabbed entry window where each file opens up as a new tab. If you have more than one file opened, then they will be displayed as tabs so that you can switch between them by selecting the appropriate tab. But at any point of time, only one file is visible. There may be situations wherein you would want to view the contents of two or more files side by side instead of switching between them. Query Editor provides you with an option to split the window layout into tab groups. Right click on the tab name, and you can find options to create a new horizontal or vertical tab group. Let me select horizontal, and it divides the document area into two tab groups. One above, and one below, and you have two files opened side by side. You can work with them as you do normally. When you execute the query, they have their own results pane. If you can notice, the first tab group has two tabs, we can create another tab group and see all the three files side by side. If you would want to free the space occupied by the results pane, select hide results pane from the window menu, or press ctrl plus R. If you open or create a new query, it will show up in the active tab group. 
You can also open the new file in a separate tab group to see all the four files side by side. You can right click on the tab and choose to move it to the other tab group. If there is only one tab in the tab group and if you move it out, the empty tab group will be removed. There is no limitation on the number of lines or number of different queries you can write in a single tab. If there are more than one query and if you press the execute button, it will execute all the queries, with the results appearing separately, though all in the same results tab. The messages tab shows the number of rows affected for all the queries that executed successfully in the same order. If you want only some part of the code to be executed, select it and then press the execute button, which only executes the selected code. The other option is to comment out the code. Query editor provides an handy option. Select the code that you would want to comment, and click the comment button on the toolbar. To comment a single line, prefix it with double hyphen. Select the commented code, and click on the uncomment button on the toolbar to uncomment the lines. You might come across situations where there are so many lines of code in a tab that you will have to scroll up and down to see them. If you would want to refer to a piece of code at the top while editing something at the bottom, we'll have to scroll. Query editor provides you the split window option for such situations. Notice the button above the vertical scroll bar. Just drag it down to split the window. Unlike the tab group, the split option provides a split view of the same file. Notice, when I edit a part of the code, it reflects in the other view as well, since they both are just the same file with two different views. Other than these features, Query Editor supports a lot more, which I will cover as and when we use them. In the next video, I will introduce you to the Query Designer. You can find a lot of free video tutorials, training materials and much much more at our site www.ignani.com. Learn through videos. Get your questions answered from experts, take online tests to evaluate. Post all your questions at our site, our experts will be there, to answer. Feel free to contact us.